bike culture is, is a really healthy thing, for, especially for this country. As a country, we've made a real uh, serious investment in car kind of infrastructure mm -hmm. for our transportation sure. policy. You know, I, I think if you take a serious look at what's going on in the world and what the future holds for us, um, it's pretty hard to conclude that we're going to be just continue to drive cars forever. Well, right now, car culture is normative culture. People don't talk about car culture because car culture is like American culture, or like the, cult, the dominant culture in the U.S., whereas bicycling culture is seen as a subculture. To continue the way we are with oil, for sure. Um, and I think there's going to be like many different facets to our new modes of transportation, whether that is like trains, um, but also just locally bikes. I think that's going to be so important. Right now, there's sort of a subcultural aspect to bike culture. There's sort of an us and them kind of quality to it. And so, if you ride a bike, uh, uh, and there's you know there's the whole kind of urban hipster phenomenon um, where people ride fixed gear bikes, and if you don't ride a fixed gear bike, you're not cool. And it's like, come on, let's just all ride bikes. Who cares? You know. Recent studies highlight an increasing number of Americans turning to biking or walking transportation, especially young people. In a time of increasing fuel prices and an expanding awareness of the environment, urban areas with reliable public transportation are becoming a more favorable place to live for a working citizen. Is it really that hard? It looks like leisure bike. <laughs> It's a real misallocation of our resources as a nation to be so dependent on automobiles. I've spent a lot of time in other parts of the world where they aren't dependent on automobiles and people live wonderful, happy, healthy lives without cars. There are lots of really negative health effects of our reliance on automobiles mm -hmm. in this country. And you know, not the least of which is the fact that 35,000 people die in them every year just mm -hmm. in this country alone and a million people are worldwide. Bike culture has a lot of great personal health benefits for people. Um, we have a horrible obesity program, a, a problem in this country um, from youth on up to elderly people. The environmental benefits are obvious. Um, we can get people out of cars if they're able to live their lives by being more active and get around to the places they need to get to by walking or riding their bicycles in safety. Um, that's, that's a good thing for the planet. Um, and I think it's a good thing for our communities. You know, we also have to recognize that even if bicycles are more sustainable than, say, cars and don't necessarily engage in the sort of, allow us to engage in same sort of like oil wars that are causing so many problems in our world right now, um, the materials that bicycles are made of are also not completely innocent either. And so, um, you know, we can't say that bicycles are completely like a perfect, innocent, peaceful technology because they're not. Um, but they are better in terms of the form of transportation. And so when people come into Ball to just say fix their bike sometimes, they'll sort of also be saying, hey, you know, let's, can I borrow that tool or can we share? Or even sometimes, you know, oh, do you mind showing this person what you just did? So just helping everyone sort of like learn to fix bikes together and ultimately just get on out on their bikes in good working order and fix them up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, every day. I ride my bike every day to work. I think I'll always ride bike. My uncle Sam, he doesn't even own a car. He actually bikes for his to his job and back. And so I actually really like that lifestyle. We've been on the road for two months, and I think it was just like really inspiring to people to know that you could bike thousands of miles um, and just like having everything on your bike with you. I could just disappear into the world with the clothes on my back 
and my bike and I'll be the happiest kid alive. I just love to ride my bike. My bike. Just about anyone can manage a bike. Pace is a process. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily something that will ever be achieved. Um, because there will always be conflict, but it can always be worked on. Um, just like we also talk a lot about safer spaces, because having a safe space is important, but you're never going to get there. You can have a safer space though, where you're working on having it be a safer space. Um, and by that I mean a place where people feel welcome and comfortable. Um, it's really important to me to have Bike Forth be a place where people feel welcome. Um, we have wars over oil. And entire cities are built around cars as an infrastructure. Uh, I mean, Walmart is out in the middle of nowhere. You have to drive to it. And if you're poor, Walmart is the option because society is built around that. Reframing how people think about what norms are. Um, and what sort of, what, what is a privilege and what is just, um, well, what is a privilege and what is not? Because right now, I think people think about having their own car and getting in it and going wherever they want really quickly and be able to find a parking place right in front as more of a right. It's something that um, is really tied to the idea of what it means to, like, say, have freedom and independence, which are these, like, really fundamental American values. Um... I think it's really good for building community. By biking through a local area, you're seeing the businesses and the, realizing what's there, seeing the plants, feeling the atmosphere, rather than, again, being stuck in a car. Meeting these people along the way, especially on my cross-country trip, just having an understanding of people just promotes a sense of, like, I mean, you don't want to be in conflict with people that you understand and that you've talked to, whereas if you're, like, have this distance and this, like, just like ideas of people but have never met them, I think it's so easy to like have this wall up against them and like have, I don't know, have there be a possibility for conflict. I think when you know someone face to face, just, you're so much like less likely to, you know, um, to want to have any kind of conflict. We're not going to be able to continue the way we are with oil for sure. Um, and I think there's going to be like many different facets to our new modes of transportation, whether that is like trains, um, but also just locally bikes. I think that's going to be so important. Yeah, I think it's just going to be more widely accepted, more widely used, um, and hopefully our bigger systems will invest in that. And if not, I think definitely our smaller communities will. <laughs> We ask the world, we ask everybody, what are the ways we can come closer to a more sustainable future? How can we do that? How? How can we make the items we use today the same ones we use 10 years from now? You hit 50, 100. How can we come to terms that our world is not replaceable nor renewable? The materials that we take are not worth the blood, sweat, and tears we see in the future. What can you do to change that?